So like I said before, when it comes to traveling around Tokyo, it's best to use the subway system if you don't have a car, and even if you have a car, because there are so many subway stations in this city. I mean, so many that you literally can get off of any of them and get to wherever you want to go in like 10 minutes, like 10 minute walk at most, you know, unless you're out, out in the boonies somewhere, everything major is there. And the most important thing to have is this PASMO card here. This PASMO card, you put money on it, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever, 10, 10,000 yen, 50,000 5,000 yen, whatever, or not 10,000, I'm sorry, 1,000 yen, however much you want, right, doesn't matter, and then as you use it, it takes, you know, it takes it away, so you go through right here, you know, and then boom, it opens up, and you go right through, and you need to have this, otherwise you gotta pay for a ticket every single time that you, uh, every single time you use the subway, but this thing is very effective, and so you get a PASMO card, remember that, you can get anywhere, and if you need any help, people in Japan are very, very, you know, very nice. They're very willing to help you. If you show them your GPS on your phone, or if you tell them, hey, can I get to so-and-so station, most of the time they will know, and they'll be able to help you, even if they have limited English. If you show them your phone, they'll know. So it's just, remember, PASMO card, very useful. So it's another beautiful day here in Tokyo, and uh, today, is the day of Wrestle Kingdom, day, day one of Wrestle Kingdom, January 4th. Very excited to see, you know, the show and Okada, my favorite. Today, we are, Okada and Ibushi gonna be awesome, I can't wait, but anyways. So before the Tokyo Dome, decided to go to this market that's on the other side of town. We're gonna use the uh, bus to get there. But anyways, I'm gonna go to this market and they're supposed to have like a whole bunch of food um, like all kinds of different kinds of food. So I'm gonna hit up that for breakfast and for uh, lunch or whatever. Then come back over this side of town because Tokyo Dome is actually in that direction. And then, uh, yeah, the show. So we'll see. Anyways, I'll, I'll show y'all what we find here shortly. Right outside of Ueno Station, the Pachinko slot machine, of course. These huge buildings here. I'm trying to find the street market. There's another subway station that goes down. What a trip, bro. It feels good here, it really does. Good weather and good times. So the 7-Elevens here in Japan are very interesting because the quality of food is significantly higher. There's no slurping machines here, which I thought was interesting because I thought that was a 7-Eleven trademark all over the world. But no, we have all this higher quality food. Um, just a lot healthier, you know, like for example, there's these chicken cutlet with cheese sauce sandwiches, some Starbucks stuff there, some burgers, you know, stuff you can microwave and things like that. Uh, just much higher quality as far as like health goes and it's very different. You know, you can get a lot of stuff here that you can get at the American 7-Elevens, which are kind of trashy to be honest with you. You know, um, but it's a different country, so that's how it is. This is the Ameo Yokochi Market. They have all kinds of food here, street vendors, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can buy anything here. You can buy purses, you can buy clothes, you can buy shoes, you can buy food. There's a little market right there. You can buy everything, and I'm here to eat. That's what I'm going to do now. Look at this. This is madness in a good way. Just look at this craziness. It looks like Times Square, like it has that split sort of street. Obviously not as big, but this is totally crazy. I don't even know what the hell they sell here. All oh, cool ice cream, I think. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it is. I gotta go in there and look. It's very multicultural here as well. Look at that. You never see this kind of stuff outside Japan except for a couple of places here and there. Look what I found here at the Oeno Street Market. It's an elevator with some of our favorite characters in anime and video games. And then we have this awesome Dragon Ball Super One Piece. Japan, cool Japan. That's pretty awesome right there. And of course, little balls. First thing I got on my adventure is this beef kebab from this place right here. This Aras Kebab place, it's not even that far from the entrance. It looks so delicious. Oh, it looks good. And the verdict is that this thing was absolutely delicious. He put meat on the bottom and the top, so when you bite into it, you always get a piece of meat. Put some cabbage in there, and there's this special sauce they put on. They have it in spicy and non-spicy variety. 
It is so fucking delicious. Oh my god. It's like my mouth is orgasming in an orgy and a simultaneous orgasm. That's how good it is. I'm not kidding either. So here at the uh, at the market is a whole arcade set up here. And look what I found. Dragon Ball Zenkai Battle. Hey look, that's me I think. Alright, I'm playing now. So not only does the machine take money, it actually takes the bus pass that pass from. Right here, you can play. This is my first time ever playing the game. And it looks great. It looks great. It looks amazing. It's kind of like Xenoverse. It really reminds me of Xenoverse. She tells you how to get hot and stuff. So in this game, it's okay, I mean, I'm fighting the gear right now. It's got Kikuchi music all over it. So I'm in there, what's your Kikuchi score? It's in here. Yeah, what's up? I'm having a good time, but I can't believe I found Zenkai Battle Royal. Over at the market, I found this little uh, ramen place, and basically, it's not in English. And the guy doesn't speak English, but if you just point to what you want, like you tell them we want one of these and one of these or one of these, they'll know. Everything, not everything, but most things in Japan have pictures. Even There's even pictures outside the store with prices. So before you even go into the store or into the restaurant, you can just look at what they have and see how much it costs, which is really cool. You know, that's a good idea. Um, that way you're not surprised by the prices. You know, not every place has that, but a lot of places do. You just point and they'll make it for you. Then you worry about paying later, which is no big deal. They gave the number. The food has been served and, man, this thing is hot. Look at that. Look at the steam coming out of that. Look at that. This thing is piping hot with some incredible fried rice and some gyoza. Brother and sisters, this, the thing about Japan is even small little places that aren't like huge or whatever, all the food is really good. Like, they take special care of how they cook. So it's a big thing over here to eat well. So I'm very happy. Eating is like the best here. Outside of Tokyo Station here, they have this big countdown right here to the 2020 Olympic Games. And... Uh, you know, five hours, three minutes, uh, two seconds, and 202 days, of course, until the Olympic Games uh, here in Tokyo. Here's the shot of the station right here. It's humongous. Look at that. It's just, it's just, this, I mean, I'm, that's not the station, but I'm saying still, buildings are crazy big. Of course, that's how it is here, but there's a billion of them, so... There it is right there. We are walking into the Tokyo Dome area. This whole thing has restaurants, there's a Denny's, there's a bar, there's a Ferris wheel back there. Everything around the Tokyo Dome is like a big amusement park, including the events that go on on the inside. Look at this craziness, look at this. There's a TGI Fridays there. This is nuts. And then we're gonna go in and watch a New Japan January 4th show, I cannot believe that I am going to a New Japan show, I, I, especially a dome show. I, I'm just, I'm floored, floored legit. This is it right here, folks. I'm about to walk in. Look at that thing. The Tokyo Dome, the Egg Dome. Yes. Look how incredibly gigantic this roller coaster is here at the Tokyo Dome. Like I said in earlier videos, the Tokyo Dome has like amusement parks and look at this. They have like a little, a little mini amusement park there. It's like, you know, it's pretty much part of the dome. I'm in the dome right now, but look at how big, it's humongous. Look at that. It keeps going up. I don't know if y'all can see that. Wow. I am inside the Tokyo Dome right now. I'm literally in the Tokyo Dome. And as you can see, when you first walk in, you actually have access to the area where the match is taken. Look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at it. Oh my goodness, we're in, right now the startup match is on. Look at so you can actually watch from up here. Even if while you're buying concessions, they have it open so you can watch. Welcome to Wrestle Kingdom.
We're here at the Tokyo Dome. I can't believe it. Lifelong dream of mine to be here at the Tokyo Dome watching New Japan Pro Wrestling on January 4th. You know how many shows of these I've seen since I was a kid? Since I was, I don't know, well, not a kid kid, but you know, like a teenager or whatever. Late nights, 2, 3 in the morning watching these shows, and I'm here now. Crazy. The time has come! Production is incredible. Tokyo Tokyo Dome. Wrestle Kingdom Night 1 is over. I wanted to show you all how beautiful the nighttime is here with the Tokyo Dome. With the, with the lights lit up and whatnot. Take a look at that right there. That's pretty awesome. Leaving right now. Leaving the, the building. What a great show. What a great night. The last three matches were killer as expected. And uh, tomorrow night, night 2. Tired as hell, but it was a good time. Look at this big triangle aggro crag thing. It's just incredible. So tonight is Wrestle Kingdom Day 2. And uh, before we do Wrestle Kingdom, I'm very excited about that. Going to be going to the Skiji Fish Market. Herms recommended it over to me to, uh, well, eat and see what kind of food they have there. Also, apparently there's been people saying that I'm not really in Japan, that... I'm not meeting people here and that I just made the whole thing up. Uh, so this is all blue screen then. All this is blue screen. Right, that's all. Those people right there, they're not real. Right, like, those people, are, they're, they're not real. Huh? Are you that stupid? I don't know how many times I have to tell people that I'm not a liar. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like a joke at this point how stupid they are. Skeegee Fish Market where they're supposed to have the freshest everything. That's what we're told anyways. Whether or not that's true, I guess we'll find out. Or maybe we won't find out because I don't know if I'm buying any raw fish today, but I might be eating plenty of it if you know what I'm saying. We'll see how it goes. They have little vendors here and they have like prepaid, pre prepared, sorry, food. Um, you can just get right here, just grab it, you pay for it, tell the guy you want some. They're all over the place too, by the way, it's not just this guy. They are all over. Look at that. I've been showing y'all a lot of food, I've been wetting y'all's appetites, and if you come out here to Japan, yo, one thing that's guaranteed, whether you like it or not, is there's a lot of food. Look at this stuff here, this is a different bakery. Look at these rolls, cheese on enchilada style, but they're different. They're Japanese. So much bread. We have one more window here to look at. This is mouth-watering stuff right here. Mouth-watering, look at that. Wrestle Kingdom 14, day two. The main show's about to start. The pre-show is still going on. Here at the Tokyo Dome, the Dome Tokyo. People are still filing in. So I opened up this Tokyo Dome chocolate and to my surprise, this little thing here, this outer shell, this is a cone. Like it tastes like an ice cream cone, like the kind you would have, like you know, at a regular ice cream place and the ice cream's in the middle. So it's like an ice cream sandwich with the cone or surrounding it. Damn! Day two of Tokyo Dome Wrestle Kingdom is over. 
What a great show. Night one was probably a little bit better, but night two had a more emotional ending and a more epic finale with Naito winning, but uh, we're all heading out right now. Here's the little circular thing. They have to move us. Whoa, and we're outside. Whoa. I have arrived at the world famous Ribera Steakhouse. If you know professional wrestling, especially in Japan, you know, or if you've really heard of, if you haven't heard of it now, you know, the most famous MMA and pro wrestling restaurant in the city. It's, uh, it's incredible. Let's see what it's like inside. <laughs> the inside of Ribera in Tokyo. Time to go memorabilia. They got stuff on the ceiling too. That's fine. I didn't eat today, but that's what I've been doing today. I went around Tokyo Dome City just hugsing around. I <laughs> can't okay, no. stop there. I grabbed some meat. Oh, I checked the roller coaster out and I got some meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go check out that horror exhibit that they have there. It's actually pretty good. It's not the most it's it's exciting one I've been on. So all the wrestling stuff is pretty much done, uh, at least for me. There's more shows. There's shows running all week pretty much, but uh, today I'm going to, I'm very excited, I'm going to be going over to Akihabara, which is the video game capital of the world, literally of the world, because, you know, many video games come from Japan. So it's literally like a little mini city filled with nothing but arcade machines and just all kinds of stuff. My glasses are crooked here. You know, I, mean, I didn't even see myself there. Anyways, um, so we're going to be going there, meeting up with a whole bunch of people. Many of them are not Japanese. Some are Gaijin. Some are people who you know. Some you may not know. And uh, yeah, it uh, should be a good time. If my lips look extra puffy, oh, they're chapped as hell. Um, that's just how it is. But uh, yeah, that should be a good time. And I'll have a lot of video about that on here. Here at Akihabara Station, and the uh, first thing I see, well, not the first thing I see, but catch to my eye, Akihabara X. Japanese figures, Akihabara X with Gundam, and there's Son Goku, and there's another Goku right there. Luffy. I wonder what's in store for us in there. It's like New York, except more modern. What is this? It's like New York. This is exactly how I pictured Japan. This area. I never knew they sold three caballeros freaking stuff. This is one of those uh, cranes. So yeah, I met up with this group of people here. We've got some some a, a clique of people. Some you may recognize, some you may not. Maria is there. Kristoff is there. Some very important people. We're going to go to some very important places. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Some of them don't even wanna be filmed, so we'll leave it at that. Maybe you might recognize them someday, but that day is not today. This is absolute, just incredible. It's everywhere. Broly, Gurky. There's, it's just, it's endless, it really is. <gasps> it's Final Fantasy. Now we have the Dragon Quest stuff. <gasps> I want it all, everything. I gotta see what else they have, but I want everything. They are showing the movie here at the figure store. Oh man, this is lovely. There is a, a, a convention, except it's every day. It's a convention, going to a con every day, and much nicer displays too. 
much nicer displays. Pokemon socks over here. I like those Frieza socks. I wish it was Fat Frieza. Wow. <laughs> the Dragon Quest XI art book. And I, I, don't, I don't have this. I have the previous games one, but I don't have this. All Tori. We're not spoiling the game, are we? No. And then I also picked up this awesome kid Goku. Look at him. Look at him. It's adorable. It's adorable. And what is that? Can I see that? It's a Vegeta water bottle. And a clipboard. Yeah, I wonder who. <laughs> Wacky. At a conveyor belt sushi place, you actually put your orders in with this little tablet right here. It's got an overgrown switch. You just push in whatever you want. Look at that. Limited time special. Ooh, get, yeah, get one of those. No, the other one. Yeah, wild Japanese tiger prawn. And then here's the greeting. Kenichi is with us. He may or may not work for a company that you may or may not have heard of, <laughs> depending on what you're into. Kristoff is there. Very excited to eat a lot. <laughs> Hurry up and choke my chicken! <laughs> is he farting or is he dying? He's dying. <laughs> Pokemon calendar. I'm here at one of the many video game stores with Dragon Quest 11s on display here. Uh, if you love video games, I mean, unfortunately they are in Japanese, but a lot of these games you can play, you know, without having to know the language. Some you have to know the language, obviously, but um, the displays here are just absolutely gorgeous. Death and Request 2. Here we have some Switches for sale. Nintendo Switch. That Red Dead Redemption 2 PS4 looks sweet. And then we have some Gundam models up here. It's like the old school toy stores when we were all kids, except Japan's got them everywhere. Like, you imagine this? You imagine this culture, dude? We used to have these as kids, and now they have them here, like, forever. As adults, we can enjoy them. You know, it's just, it's just a trip. But there's so many Gundam models. It's absurd. And I have no idea. Oh, these are DVDs. Okay. DVDs of, like, different stuff. Probably different anime and whatnot. There's, like, tons of it here. Hail Xeon would recognize some of these. So a lot of people never really got into the Vita, right? The Vita was not really a big deal in the US from what I understand. But in Japan, there are so many Vita games. These are all used games to that for sale. That's pretty crazy. Um, and it was just so much bigger. Like there's aisles of this stuff, yo. And you just come pick up, pick one up. Oh, here, this is in English. But it's, but it's still a Japanese game, I think. I can't tell. I can always go up there and ask. Like this copy of Red Dead Redemption, is this an American game or I mean it's an English game, but I'm saying is the game in English or in Japanese? Because I don't see any see look, it's in English in the back. Yeah. So you can buy games that work on American PS4s here. Really? Yeah. That's fantastic, <laughs> dude. Wow. Stardew Valley. Wow, okay. Getting this uh Zeno Gogeta figure for 700 yen, which is about six bucks. Six dollars some change. That's a sweet ass deal. We are here at the world famous Gundam Cafe. Yes, indeed. This is the cafe, uh, like shop or whatever. The actual cafe where you eat is back there. This is really where most of the tourists end up going. Amazing. Ago, they were promoting Dragon Quest 11S and all the walls and everything was Dragon Quest 11S. Yeah. yeah, I'll take this though. Yeah. Ah. I literally have not felt like this since I was a little kid. I'm gonna go real slow so y'all can see it. And this is an entire floor, an entire floor. Here's the Lego section. It's all just this common writer. It's just, I'm gonna be on this floor for hours just exploring. And it just never ends. Build your own Arale complete with poo. <laughs> 
Wow. There's a rally right there. Oba-chan. Nicha. Nicha. This is it. Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Look at this. The arcade game. The original arcade game. I know. I played this game before. And here we have the Mecha Dragon Quest Monsters Victory Road. And yes, I am going to play it. Oh my god. What do you think about that, huh? <laughs> Miracle Crow Cup here likes it. There are aisles after aisles after aisles of Switch stuff. I mean, not just one, like at Target, you know, like we have in the U.S. No, there's literally aisles and aisles of Switch games and merchandise, add-ons, controllers, you know the drill. Dun, 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 dun. We have arrived at Luita's bar. Listen to that beautiful music. The Dragon Quest Cafe. Dragon Quest. Oh, look at this. Oh, my God. I cannot wait to go in. Oh. This is unbelievable. The Sword of King. Oh, somebody in Japan must like me a lot because we're here right now in the VIP room of Luita's bar. Look at this. This is the private room right here. Look, you got stuff. Here. Look at this. This is literally one of the happiest days of my life. Dragon Quest is what I love more than anything in the world. And they're starting off the meal here with some uh, appetizers here, Dragon Quest themed. And over there we have figurines. I can't believe it. There's a Sinethian sword, the Sword of Heaven. I'm just, it's music playing nonstop, and I don't know what to say. I don't, it's just, this is one of the happiest days of my life, seriously. Well, and here's the Veronica drink. It's, uh, the Veronica drink is, uh, what is this? Orange soda float. It's, uh, blood orange with soda. Non-alcoholic, even though it looks alcoholic. But you can add alcohol if you ask them for it. They give you many metal pizzas here. It's a slime meat pie. Look at this. This is just incredible. Look at this. Well, I'll show you. They give you Dragon Quest coasters. This is, this is like some of the, like, I'm... Gigantus Club. Oh, that's the Gigantus Club. It's smoked turkey. But look at this. This is just so... I'm in heaven right now. My favorite franchise of all time. So the Sega building has multiple floors. Um, and each floor has a different sort of like type of game. Like you've got your crane games. You've got your big arcade machines here. And there's still more to explore. And it's just... There's quite a bit. You got your get changed there, your drinks if you want them, and uh, it's a lot of fun, yo. I would totally come here frequently if I lived in Japan. So I've been talking about the Sega building, and there's actually multiple Sega buildings. Uh, I should have mentioned that. There's actually a lot. We found three so far, and I think there's a fourth one too. But uh, you see some of the games here. Of course, Virtual Fighter, which Sega did make. You have Tekken there. Um, 
And of course, like I said before, not only do these games take coin, but some of them, some of them take the bus pass, the Pasmo pass. So if you fill up that Pasmo pass and come to some of these, you might not even need change, yo. Um, if you want to do it that way. But if you need it, there's change right there. So, yeah. If you're a fan of Gundam, And there's other stuff here too, but it seems to be mostly Gundam. These models are so awesome, dude. Look at that. Wreck shit with that. The Pikachus dance the song. Start over again. Oh, it's different songs. ですか。少しお手伝いしてあげましょう。Here's the more classic arcade. Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. We've got Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Older machines there. Tekken 7's over there. Final Fantasy The City is back there. These are the classic stuff. King of Fighters is here. Yes. The classics are here. Street Fighter 2, the uh, Hyper Street Fighter 2, the anniversary one. Which I didn't know I even had an arcade release, but it's there. Wow. I'm still finding new stuff, too. Oh, Street Fighter V is over here. Right. Street Fighter IV is over here. Is Third Strike here? Ah. Alpha, there's Third Strike right there. Every Street Fighter, well not everyone, but a lot of them are here, yo. And then over here we've got um, Virtual Fighter 2, the classic Virtual Fighter 2. Boot KD1. This is like the classics, bro. Like the real classics. And then more Street Fighter 4. Here we have a lot of the Guilty Gear games. The Guilty Gear set. Here's that Gundam arcade game I tried to play earlier and didn't do so well. Samurai Spirits, which is Samurai Showdown. Um, they just call it Samurai Spirits here. Multiple cabinets. Uh, this is not 24 hours, by the way, but still, you know, spend an afternoon here would be a good, good little time. Capcom vs. SNK2. I'm actually not sure what this game is. Oh, okay, Persona. I think. I can't even tell. Capcom SNK. King of Fighters back here. Man, this is great. They have tournaments here also, just so you're aware. Virtual on Cyber Troopers. There's another anniversary Street Fighter. So the floor beneath the fighting game one, I guess, has more fighting games. Didn't even notice that. But also it has games like shooters. I love arcade shooters like Darius. And check this out over here. Darius. Look at that giant shark back there. Darius Burst X. That's, look at that. Ultra widescreen. I am marking out. I've never seen this before. Never even heard of it before. I know some of y'all probably have, but I never have. Old school Darius machine. 1943 is over there. Oh! 
Nothing but shooting games. Look at this. Oh my god, this is legit heaven. And I found it on the last day. When I come back to Japan, I'm definitely coming here. Wow. Twin B. Played that a long, long time ago. Akaburu. Wow. Yeah, here's the racing stuff over here. この世はでかい宝島そうさ今こそアドベンチャー Oh, I haven't seen this. Found a versus Super Mario Brothers machine and a Tetris versus machine. This is like an underground arcade right here. Right, it's underground. Well, it's actually on the fifth floor, but underground is in, it's not easy to find. Final Fight, Altered Beast. And here we are in the, another floor of Super Potato. There's a giant Star Fox, yo, and a giant Mario. Look at this. They got 64 controllers hanging down everywhere. Dragon Quest, of course, GOAT game series. So much. Crash Bandicoot. More Dragon Quest up there. Oh man, this is great. This is classic. Diddy Kong Racing. Oh man, this is awesome. This is great. This is this is amazing. Look at this. this is super old stuff. Old games. Look at this shit. More awesome Nintendo stuff here. Dragon Quest stuff. Some slimes. There's like a whole like thing of slimes you can buy them. 110 each. Here we have the, the sealed games, they're behind this glass. Here are the sealed N64 games, and let me tell you, they're not cheap. They also have Game Boy SPs, or I'm sorry, yeah, Game Boy Advance SPs, yeah. Um, the Super 64 with HDMI, like, they've got all kinds of stuff here. Game Boy Advance games in box. Just amazing. They got, I mean, it's just endless. The Nintendo 64 section here at uh, Super Potato. A lot of classic Zelda, Majora's Mask, and Ocarina of Time. There's Diddy Kong Racing. And there's a lot here, yo. There's a lot to go through. I mean, you have to pull them out. You know how 64 games are to see. But man, what a set. Famcom stuff. There's probably old Famcoms all over the place here. Look at the... Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know that music. Look at this Zelda. Whoa! I think I might pick that up. This fan is a product. Please do not have a fans in the product. This fan is a product. Please do not have a fans in the product. Alright, so last day of Japan today. I'm flying back to the States tomorrow. Um, got a lot done today. Talked to a lot of very interesting people. Got a lot of very interesting information. And I got to play a lot of arcade games, which is always a good a tree, you know, I feel like when I come to Japan, it's like you're a kid again, you know what I mean? Especially if you're a geek, you know, all kinds of stuff to do for geeks here, anime, manga, or um, video games. And you don't have to speak the language, man, there's a lot of stuff to do. And, you know, it helps if you speak the language, though, but uh, real quick, so, um, apparently, and I don't know if this is true or not, but this could be an urban legend, but I was told that Toriyama's house... He has a sign in front of his house, right, that says, leave me alone. That the sign says, leave me alone. Now, I haven't seen it. I'm not going to go to the guy's house. I'm not going to risk going to Japanese prison because he doesn't know who I am. Obviously, people on the internet want me to talk to him like I want to talk to him. We all want to talk to him, right? Well, quite a, well how many questions do we have for him? But uh, 
Apparently, yeah, he's uh, his. <laughs> He has a sign in front of his house that says, leave me alone. And uh, just the picture of that would be worth it, but I'm not going to go there. Maybe next trip I'll, I'll take a picture just for my own little, you know, collection, but it's not a big deal. Anyways, about to get on this train now and to head back to the hotel. So before I actually get to the hotel, I wanted to show you all some of these uh, wacky drinks here. So apparently this whole car sweat thing here is supposed to like... Uh, give you some kind of energy so it says ion supply like with electrolytes and whatnot but it tastes really really nasty uh just disgusting uh there's cast out the pepper there craft boss i've seen a lot of this guy all over all over town i wanted to also follow up with something i said Jap i might get that japanese green tea this guy's over here all right anyways i wanted to follow up a little bit more about what i was saying uh I had not, I didn't intend on going to Toriyama's house, I'm not stupid, but uh, it's just funny, like that, that whole leave me alone thing is funny, but I did talk to some other people and all I'm going to say is uh, Toy Animation is a very weird company, let's, let's just leave it at that, but I'll probably do a whole video going into more detail about that um, soon, so anyways, I'm out. Taking the Narita Express train back to the airport, and good lord, this thing is fast. It's a direct passage from the Tokyo station all the way to the Tokyo Narita airport. Look at this, look at the speed. Well, I mean, it's not quite bullet train speed, but it's probably the next level beneath it. It goes fast and then slow depending on what part of the track you're on. But uh, this is awesome right here and very relaxing. Well, the trip is over and I'm home. Finally, get to sleep in my own bed for the first time in like two weeks. So, yeah, now I'm going to get to work on editing this stuff for y'all and unpacking all this stuff that I bought, which I bought quite a bit of stuff, yo. Yes, I did buy slime chancletas. But anyways, I'm going to get to work on this. my vinyl Goku. I'm very proud of it. I'm going to get to work on this stuff uh, today for y'all in the next couple of days and we'll have it up soon. And by the time you see this, it'll already be up because this is going to be the end of that video. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the vlogs. I love Japan. Uh, I will never live there because I just don't think I can live in that society. But at the same time, I love that society. Like, I, There's things I wish that they would adopt from Japan to the U.S. I might do a whole stream about that. So anyways, love you guys and we'll talk soon.